This video is going to show you a solo flower spider the watcher dungeon run on a warlock for those who just want to see that and skip the timestamps. Other than that, I can show you the weapons and the build I used, etc. So, this is going to be me firing through it quickly, uh, but more information will be in the run itself, alright? So, first of all, the subclass that we use is Well of Radiance. We've got Phoenix Dive on, Celestial Fire, Healing Grenade, but we do swap off to Fusion Grenade later on in the dungeon. So, we've got two different nades there Touch of Flame, Icarus Dash. The fragments are Solace, Ashes, Torches, Wonder. Weapons, Exotic Grail Launcher, Weaver Horde, we never swap off. Callus Mini Tool, bring yourself a good SMG or a good sidearm or a good auto rifle, whatever you like using to shoot the fuses and stuff. Um, this is what I used. I also recommend having a, a long range weapon at times to swap to if you want. It's kind of helpful. Heavy Wise, you want to bring two DPS weapons. First, a linear fusion rifle for the first boss, and for the second boss, for the far boss, a rocket launcher, a demolitionist rocket launcher. Search your vault for a demolitionist rocket launcher. It's super important. And linear-wise, if you have not got cataclysmic with the enhanced, uh, with the bait and switch and all that stuff, which I, re I, I understand, I've read a lot of comments about people struggling on DPS because they don't have this. Well, guess what? Everyone has Taipan. Every, anyone can craft this so that's why I'm using type on in the run to prove that it's half decent right so for you for those of you who don't have this then use type on right type on's insane uh, and, and a demolitionist rocket very important as I said two builds that we use and we're using a Karnstein armlets build for health regen I'll just quickly run through the mods so we've got sharp shooting which increases vice stinger I'll talk about in the run linear fusion rifle armor finder well of life Element Laments, SMG Loader, Overload SMG, yes it does work in this dungeon. Void Damage Resistance, Unflinching Linear Fusion Aim, Linear Fusion Scavenger, Elemental Charge. Two class mods on the class piece, you must, uh, you should level up for these, they're super important, solo operative and weak and clear. We will then swap off this build to the Starfire Protocol, we'll obviously switch fu to Fusion Grenades and we'll use a Strike and Light build for resistance. Notice there is no high energy fire, no font of might, none of that stuff. I'm not using it, and I'll tell you why in the run. So that's the general advice of, of what to bring for this. So since we've done the Titan run already for the Soul Flow Spider the Watcher, a lot of people want to do or will want to know um, strats for the Warlock, um, survivability, stuff like that. Uh, so this is what I ran on it, I guess, and how I sort of dealt with it. Not that I'm super experienced with this dungeon on a Warlock. This is literally... I haven't done this dungeon much on a Warlock at all. Right? Uh, so just bear that in mind. But I do know enough to to sort of um, aid somebody through it. Because I know there's a lot of Warlock PvE mains. Um, still. So... It's mainly advices for those, of course. So this starting section, um, apparently if you don't shoot the final fuse, the, the, as in the ones at the back, the four that are in a square, if you don't shoot those, you don't get any supplicants. I can confirm that is true. You do get harpies, but they're, they're different to supplicants. They don't explode. So don't shoot the final um, four fuses. Just do the route. I'm assuming that you know the route. This video is going to be based on the preposition that you kind of already know the mechanic with the fuses and you kind of know the route. Apart from the boss fights, because that, that's where it gets a little bit more, uh, more difficult for people. But what, what I'm doing here is just speeding uh, it up for editing purposes to make it easier on myself because, as I, I, like I've said in the past, this is probably the hardest dungeon to commentate on that I've ever seen. Even harder than like Pit of Heresy. I've always got something to talk about when it's like, I don't know, the other dungeon. This one, my mind's just sort of blank. There's not a lot to sort of... Once I've told you that mechanic, you're just seeing it four times. Five times. It doesn't matter how... It depends on how many phases you do. So, it's, it's really difficult, as I say. That's why I'm speeding uh, unimportant parts up, I would call it. Right? Uh, this bit's just a jump maze. There's a chest behind us on the left-hand side, if you didn't know. I'm sure most people do know where the, ch the, the two secret chests are by now. I didn't go for it because I've already got it. 
So you just want to make your way to the first encounter, ascend the spire, right? That's all you're doing. And this is teaching you the mechanic of the dungeon that you've got to learn the route of which way to uh, shoot the fuses. A couple of people um, are confused on, on why this yellow current, you see there's yellow current and red currents. But the yellow currents are mainly what you see at the start. But a lot of people like this, they, they get confused with the start and finish of each current. You need to find the start, right? Uh, once you find the start, you, you, you know, it, it's sort of routine, right? Obviously, I've do, I know the dungeon hasn't been that out that long, but this particular encounter, I've done it a lot. Loads, because you can actually farm it for loot and stuff. So, it's in my mind, like the back of my head, uh, like the back of my hand for this. I know the route exactly, so I'm not going to come to get this fuse on the left and this one on the right. I will at the final boss, because that's where it is interesting. The dungeon's top marks at the final boss, in my opinion. But everything else is a little bit undercooked for this dungeon, I think. Uh, I've let it settle with me as well. And it's you're not going to change it. I thought... The, the only thing that's going to change is that when we get higher power, the dungeon will feel more comfortable to run for people. Because it's a realisation now that you can actually, a lot to a lot of people, that you can over-level content by 20 levels. Which I knew this back in Duality, because people would over-level in Duality t to enable solo one phase and stuff of, of that nature. So, it's the same, obviously, for this dungeon. You can over-level it by 20 levels. But in duality, to be fair, you didn't need to overlevel it by 20 levels to be effective in it for DPS. In this dungeon, you do. You, you Well, you don't need to be overlevel, but you're going to be so much more effective. That's why I want to rerun this dungeon at 1610. I'm 1603 nearly today, as of today. Mind, I barely played this week. I played a ton for week one, week two, not so much. You know, you can't just constantly play the game. There's stuff to be done outside of life, right? But... 16.03, so, you know, I'll be pretty effective. Uh, I'll be do, probably doing, should be doing max damage, I think, uh, at the Harpy boss. But at the um, final boss, I won't be doing max damage that you possibly can do. Um, but still quite a bit. And I do recommend anyone who's struggling with the final boss, if you're 15.90s, just leave it, honestly. The amount of power level you can do in one week, if you really put your mind to it, I know it's boring and you get fed up, but you reap the rewards from it, seriously. You could get to 1610 by the end of this week, by the end of the next reset, definitely. Um, if you've played every week and done all the pinnacles, etc. Et you know, so maybe just wait, there's no rush to get this emblem, right? So anyways, the first boss, right, now... If you saw the Tyrant run, there's going to be things I've, I've repeated from that run for this. But I am a bit more smoother with this encounter as opposed to then, because that was like at the start of when the dungeon came out. So I'm a little bit more accustomed to this encounter. Obviously, it's a DPS heavy fight, right? There isn't much combat experience uh, or combat needed for you to get this encounter done. You are you. It's incentivized that you skip ads. So what what I do and what most people do is just complete the currents. I follow on screen. Each four sides, four runways have it has its own unique route, but that route never changes. So once you know that route, you know it. Now notice I've got healing grenade on and phoenix dive. Phoenix dive they changed when Soul 3.0 came out. You get cure times two when you activate it, and it gives you almost max health, depending on you on what your health is. It's a huge thing, and it's basically the same cooldown as a heal and rift. No different. Um, the reason why heal and rifts and stuff like that are of this of this nature are not good in the solo is because this fight, th this this dungeon requires you to be mobile a lot. There's not much time to put down a heal and rift. And if you put down your healing rift, um, you, you're not going to have another one anytime soon. And then when you start shooting fuses, you might need to get health back. You've used your nade already. What do you do? Because on a Titan, I was on Titan with Splendor Helm. Right off of my Titan run. So, 
I, I played it easy mode. Right, just to get it done on that first couple of days. And to show people the strats, I guess, on Titan. Um, but on Warlock, you, to, a, to have the restoration and cure isn't as effective as a Titan. And you haven't got that thrown armor and stuff. So this is where, the, you, as a Warlock main, you, you need... Well, not me. I, I main all three. But for you, as a Warlock man watching this, this is where your movement needs to come in to play. This fight... Isn't high demand, as I said, for movement and stuff because you are just completing the towers. Now, notice I switched to a bow there. I recommend two console players, not to PC. PC, you can get away with it. Console players, you can't. Kill the harpies, they will flinch you. I've even got unflinching aim on and I, because I'm sort of fed up of getting flinched in this dungeon. That is the biggest sandbox thing, difficulty for me, and this is getting flinched. It's not the ads. I'm not getting pressured by any of the ads. Maybe at the farm boss with supplicants, but that's it. It's getting flinched. I don't want to get flinched. And, and DPS is of utmost importance. Lest this boss fight could turn into a 30 to 40 minute boss fight for some people. Especially if you haven't got bait and switch. So what my strategy is, is that I clear out all harpies. Because a wave of harpies will spawn for each runway completed. So you'll, get, you'll have four clusters of harpies sometimes two clusters will go to, uh, join together but you need to take them out in my opinion to get good damage on console because you're going to get flinched and, and stuff like that and you don't want it so we haven't completed the final tower yet i thought i had for some reason i don't know why i thought that we're on the final tower right now i'm just getting another buff obviously you get the buff from the minotaur the electrician thing that allows you to um, shoot the fuses, of course. So, but obviously, you, you can complete the, the all the four runways with one buff. But w I end up getting another buff because I've killed all the harpies. I take the time to clear them, and it just makes DPS that much better uh, or that much less stressful. As I said, I haven't I haven't run high energy fire. I haven't run font of uh, might because it's it's too awkward to set up for people. Uh, I could set it up. All you do is you uh, knock a head off a goblin and let the goblin chase you and all that stuff. But as I said, it, it's very important in this that you don't get flinched and that you stun the boss properly and. It ends up being too much of a setup, I think, for people. So we're on Warlock. We've got Well, which is a 25% damage bonus. It won't stack with High Energy Fire anyways. So there's no need to actually run High Energy Fire on this class. On other classes, yeah, definitely. The Font of Might and stuff. But I've got Well. I'm all right. Obviously, Font of Might would stack, but I'm not using a Solar Heavy. So that's going to be out of the question. So this is what screwed up my first phase of damage. Is these two these two goblins? I hate that because I know how uh, awkward aimers can be. Like, look at the, if you saw that. If you actually slow that down, you'll see how uh, how strong the aimers was to the goblin as opposed to the boss. It, it meant I missed a shot or two. It, it meant that I was a little slower on the crits. So that that first phase of damage isn't that good. It's the worst phase I do. The other phases are really good. I end up hitting good numbers. But like that's what I'm saying. If you start leaving goblins up while you're starting shooting eyes, it's a nightmare on console. So I opted to say, stay away from the font of might and st stack of buffs. We've already got enough buffs. We've got solo operator. We've got weak and clear. We've got all this stuff. So it's not necessary, I think, really, to get the font of my gun and stuff for the for, for most people who just want to get it done. If you want to optimize your damage in two phase and three phase, yeah, you want the font of might. You need to stack it with all the other stuff. But for the most part, as I say, I'm making this for people just to um, follow by with the extra information. Because there's not a lot of information out there. Well, there is on Reddit and stuff. But when you watch a video, there's no one giving you extra information on, on the run. It's all based upon that you should know already what you're doing. If you're watching it and if you don't then you need to comment to that youtuber he might not reply to she or she might not reply to you and then you as a player are stuck and you don't know who to turn to and you want to get yourself flawless there's only so many people got it 
I said the other day it was only 40, 40.5k. Probably be more than that. I haven't looked today. Not not like I'm looking every day, but 40.5k yesterday. So there's not many people with this emblem. Probably because there's too many DPS phases that you need to do. What you need to think about is that you need to get to DPS as quickly as possible. Right, you need to forget about ad clear, forget about all that stuff until the end. So get free runways, complete the fourth all the way into the last fuse, then do a bit of ad clear. I still say that you should. Until I figure out something, because I've had it in my mind, what if there's some sort of weapon that's not like super bad for flinch and it still does a lot of damage to the boss, meaning that you don't need to take out any of the harpies. And something that you could just go to DPS quickly, get a good chunk in. I mean, some machine guns with River Horde, I don't know. I would like to try that out. I might do. Because I know, obviously, a machine gun ain't going to do what a linear is going to do. But what you need to understand on console is that if you could get to the next phase and leave harpies up and save so much time and just start the damage phase with some sort of machine gun with a River Horde style combo... Um, you wouldn't need to worry about flinch because you're not running a crit weapon. You're not running like a sniper or a, or a linear. The, you wouldn't get flinch the same with a machine gun. So I don't know how good that would be, but it would be. It would mean that getting to DPS phases is quicker than what this is. This is what the, this strat is slowed down because I have to take the time to clear the harpies, which is annoying. I must admit, it does. It, it breaks up the flow of the fight quite a lot right the fact that they, they 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 don't even push they're on the outskirts you've got to swap to a long range weapon sometimes sometimes not you know so it's kind of i haven't figured out if there's any sort of unique strat for this boss yet solo wise but if if i do i'll obviously post it but for now i'm still sticking with linears and the taipan obviously we've got the vice stinger perk on the does it, it says it increases its effectiveness. Uh, I would just put it on anyways because it's a class. It's one energy on your helmet. So for stunning the boss with the eyes, make sure that um, you pop your well for that. right? And that you just sort of strafe shoot the eyes. I'm not obviously doing the best job of it. I can tell you I'm averaging between 10 to 12 seconds to shoot the eyes, which is bang on average. But if you average that time, you can get around about 12 crits in with your linear. Right, which is decent. If you can get that by Stinger proc, then it means you haven't reloaded. So look at that damage phase we just done there. We didn't reload once. So that was ideal. Also, I don't do the strat where I walk up the runway. I don't like doing that either really too much. So I just like to just sit back and do the damage from all the way back. Because I'm going to pop a well. That's the thing with, 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 with Warlocks. They're not very mobile with their well. Yeah. So you've got to make a decision. Do you well at the end of the runway and do all your damage from there or do you pop a well halfway and sort of do it like that but then you're going to lose time popping a well so you should probably pop a well before boss dps starts that's what i come to the conclusion obviously i'm not using bait and switch and bait and switch would amplify my damage somewhat quite a lot but as i said at the start of the video i'm using it i'm using i'm not using it out of courtesy for people because I do see a lot of people spamming cataclysmic and it's a little unfair and whenever I see something like that where it's like overwhelmingly a weapon that's getting used massively in a certain encounter I do the opposite and use something that, that uh, I, I don't use it or I don't use it for a while and then come back to using it I always like to use the things that aren't as popular generally Weaver Horde as well that's another thing that's for me, it's, it's getting too popular. Too many people are using it because of weak and clear. But I remember it being an exotic where people wouldn't use it. And I and I said back then when it first came out, it, I think it's better than Anarchy, this weapon. Maybe it wasn't when Anarchy was its here day, but it, it, it's leaps and bounds above it now. Have you ever tried to use Anarchy compared to Riverhard? Riverhard's much better. Special we special weapon uh, ammo is wildly available as well. You can pair it with a linear. Anarchy, you can't do that. So, I, I foresee Riverhard are getting a nerf. I'm just going to be honest. They've already nerfed it a little bit. 
they're gonna trust me life is gonna come they're gonna say we have we have uh, adjusted with a hard once uh, as a result of high usage we think it needs another adjustment in PvE I can see all day long happening I don't want it to happen but it has been strong for quite a long since prophecy so I think they're gonna adjust that and then they're gonna buff heavy GLs for, for life all I can see that coming. Like, look at what we can farm now, Wendigo and stuff. Right? It's all you always farm for the weapon before that comes out. Like, no composure, for example, that come out before particle deconstruction. And then look how good that one was. So yeah, I foresee I foresee an after we've all coming because they they're basically giving us a a hair day with it right now. Right, giving it bells and whistles, giving it weak and clear and all that. Yeah, they slight nerfed it, but it's still super strong better than ever so I foresee that's what's gonna happen in Lightfall definitely it's the same thing here we're just repeating um, don't know what else I can really say about the encounter to be honest uh, obviously we're still using the healing grid and the Phoenix dive I ended up using Phoenix dive at the final boss and I found out something interesting about it uh, which I'll talk about obviously when we get there obviously using can't see in ambulance as well spam it really you'll get that health regen like look right now because we haven't got the survivability that the titan has got so to speak that's why we've, we've substituted and used Karnstein armors to sort of do that I wouldn't recommend Karnstein at the final boss though because the supplicants that I just wouldn't recommend I don't think I would recommend it it'd be too high it'd be too risky merely and everything Always pop your well before boss starts. Remember, DPS starts as the eyes pop out, not after. So we're de technically the DPS is starting now. So the quicker you shoot the eyes, the more DPS time you get. That's why some people can to solo two phase and solo three phase, because they can ease, they can shoot the eyes better than you. Um, but in our defense, if you're on console, it's much ha much harder to shoot the eyes quickly as opposed to a PC player. I've saw PC players averaging about eight to seven seconds. If they use if they use a trace rifle then it's done deal easy. If it's Kite and coordinate, three, four seconds they've stunned the eyes. Whereas it's taken us ten seconds. So you understand we're losing like six to seven seconds of DPS, which is huge on a fight like this. Because it's based around first DPS. I've said this before, they messed it up. It should there should have been a DPS time window of 20 seconds or 15 once all eyes are shot. Get a timer on the left hand side. Call it time collapsing, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And then that would sort it out. Everybody would have the same DPS value. Not this, not not exactly the same because it's dependent on life. But everyone would have a, an even chance at sort of having a go at this solo. Because it is rough solo. Um, because, of, because of the short windows. So the boss is around about 35-40%, so we're going to need two phases. We're going to struggle to kill him with one phase with Taipan. It is a good substitute though, as you can see, especially Vice Stinger on your helmet, the Sharpshooter mod. If it does proc, yeah, um, then you're not going to reload that entire phase. He is shooting the boss 12, maybe 13 or 14 times if you're quick enough at shooting the eyes. I put backup mag in my... Uh, mini tool I know it's only like four or five extra bullets but it, that that's an extra eye that I can shoot because you literally just tap fire right the SMG around the eyes which is why a lot of people are using SMGs trace is good the problem with using a trace rifle is that you're gonna use a double special because you'd be you presumably have with a hard on so you'd be with a hard a trace rifle and then a heavy which doesn't sit well with me on this encounter. You did, you get an increased chance at heavy, but you could swap. I guess you could do like a special finisher build. That that involves me swapping mods, which you, you know I hate doing mid dungeon runs. I hate swapping at all in runs. Obviously, I'll swap if I need to. Like when I get to the final boss, I'll swap to what I need to do. But I don't like having to micromanage going in and out of my menu while I'm trying to actively play a dungeon. So. I tried to use as I tried to use a build that sort of never really changed. Only two builds were used, and not much switching went on really with mods.
this is a good place to fight as well. I see a lot of people don't fight down here. You've got all this un this this bottom floor. It's a good place to take down all the harpies because that means the minotaurs, the goblins won't chase you, stuff like that. It's a really good place to stand is, is down here. The, another thing that can be a problem though is if the harpies, if they drop heavy, that heavy is lost. You'll find that I haven't had any problems with ammo in my run. Reason being is because I'm clearing ads. I'm clearing plenty of ads because that's how you're meant to do the encounter. You're not meant to skip everything like people are doing. But you, you are allowed to. So people are going to do that. It's destiny. The people always take advantage. If, you, if there's something that can be done where you, you just skip ads, they'll skip. Which I don't like that design. I wish they'd sort of... It's infinite ads. I just wish that you could sort of like... Control the ads a little bit better. Maybe do, you know, have an actual ad phase where you've got to do some ad clear. And the fuses, then get to DPS. As opposed to just mechanic, then DPS. Try to, as well, if you want, get to a routine. The eyes rotate, they seem to rotate exactly the same places. There's the, they're fixed with, 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 with how they rotate. So I like to take down the right-hand side and then work my way to the left, basically. We didn't get uh, Vice Stinger. Missed a shot there as well. But we've done a decent job in the end. Um, boss is basically killable at this point very easily you know 10 15 percent that damage you see there is the difference between taipan and, and, and uh, cataclysmic if i had cataclysmic on the boss would be dead by now so that's what you're saying so it just means you've got to do one extra phase that's how i see it so i've put on taipan for, for the viewers for me to do one extra phase so it isn't this, oh, well, I haven't got Cataclysmic, I can't do it. Well, no, that's not true. That isn't true. It just means you do one extra phase, which is how long? Uh, five minutes? It's five, five minutes per phase, around about. And if you have to farm ammo, maybe a little bit longer. But literally, in the grand scheme of things, it's not much, providing you know what you're doing. Do a bit of practice, of course. Like, I had to sort of come in here and learn it a little bit, because I, I, I had done it on a Titan, so I could, you know... Uh, get health regen whenever I get weak and stuff like that. Whereas on the Warlock, obviously, I didn't have that, so I had to sort of play a bit, you know, a bit more legit. Don't take as much risks. Play play properly. The, to be honest, I love the Warlock run overall. I think the Titan run's safer, but the Titan's more annoying for DPS. The Warlock run uh, has less survivability, but DPS is more fun. Especially on boss 2. Boss 2, Warlock melts because there's a bug. Well, whether it's a bug, we don't know if it's a bug or not. Have they come? Have they confirmed it's a bug? Because basically your well's doing 95% damage bonus. Well, it will be. I think it's 95% damage bonus to the boss. And that, that's your weapons. And it's to your own well. So if there's three of you, you run three wells. If you're three Warlocks. You don't just run one well. So yeah, for that, it actually makes the... And if it's a bug, it, so what? It still makes the final boss fun on a Warlock, I must admit. Because DPS ain't too tight. Um, and it's a bit more fun than what this fight is at the minute. Mind this fight, it, it, as I say, it ain't too bad. Um, to sort of solo, but I'm not the... I don't think it's the, the best dungeon boss I've ever played either. So as we switch to a... Uh, bow. Funnily enough, I don't know if anyone knows or can give us any information about it, but the boss has a teleport attack. Now, I've seen someone be killed by it. I've seen the boss actually do the teleport attack, but not teleport on me. Apparently, if the boss teleports on you, it's instant wipe. The boss did do, to, do it to me once. Let me know, has anyone been killed by that mechanic? And if so, did you see it coming? Was there any sign that that was going to happen? Where was it? I've I've never been killed by it. I've seen the boss do it once. And I was like, oh, that's cool. That's interesting. That hasn't done it again. So, I'm not sure what that what that's all about. Whether that's right or not. Whether the boss should should not be spamming that teleport attack a bit more. We're just clearing out our harpies. I know the boss is weak enough for us to go and finish. But, for sake of the video, we'll just finish him. Switch back to mini tool. This is a good place to swap weapons as well below, not up top. 
Because even though it is only normal, you will get melted by goblins if you know, you know if there's a lot of them. We're using unflinching aim. You don't need to. I, I'm not saying that you need to. I just ran it just in case. Because I, I don't I didn't even feel like I needed concussive. Right, obviously you do you do want concussive damage at the final boss, but right here there's no danger on this boss fight. It's just about how you deal with DPS and how much you can stomach and how many phases you can stomach. That's what that's what kills people in this not kill them but kills their motivation. How many how many DPS phases are you willing to go through? That you know. That's that's what's killing them. We're on the final phase now. Sometimes goblins can pour on you as well, like randomly, um, which can be annoying when you're doing your DPS with your linear, because they they tank they, t they tank your shots. There are many different weapons that I've seen people use for the eyes. I've seen people use the Tex Mechanica Scout. I've seen someone use a side ma sidearm and they melted the eyes with the sidearm. I think it was an adaptive frame sidearm. You know, the um, the three round burst ones, I think it was. Absolutely melted the eyes, so I want to try a sidearm out on the eyes. Try to trace, it was okay, but it wasn't better than Mini Tool for me, so I just stuck with Mini Tool. The cart you can coordinate, I haven't tried yet, but I understand that you can basically melt the eyes in three or four shots. Because you just strafe shoot the bolts. So that is a good option. Just re remember, if you're going to do that, you're probably going to be running double double special then. Which means, when you, how are you shooting the tr uh, fuses in that fight? Which is going to be an annoyance. You're swapping between primary, special, primary, special, special finisher and all this... You know, I didn't want to really do it. This section I've sped up because it's literally just as you see it. We've got the fan section. Be careful you don't wipe on it. There's a little trick to the fan section. I didn't use it though, but there's an insert in the wall, the shadow of the wall. If you jump into the shadow, it's sort of um, a gap that you can jump down where the fan doesn't hit. So if you're struggling with the fans, there's that. But I just like to do, try and time it. To be honest, down the fans. So yeah, you just need to shoot all the red fuses within a time limit. Because the red fuses are in, in, within a time limit. The yellow fuses are by order. Just remember that the yellow fuses, though, progress that you have made, you will not lose. So if you if it's blue up to a point, that will be saved. Whereas with red fuses, progress is lost after timer. They reset. You start again. This section, these sections are just about where you stand to shoot all five fuses or whatever. So down bottom is best. It, the time isn't strict on them. Pretty straightforward. There's three flaws to this. I almost wipe here at the fans. I'm super lucky. This is this is fan. This is top movement. This is sloppy movement and bad mo uh, good movement at the same time. So yeah, try and get a bit of time on the on the fan there. I was just a little tired while doing the run, which is probably why I done that. There'll be two hydras to kill on this section. Kill the hydras, make sure. So we have another hydra. Use a bit of Taipan. Weaver Horde. Weaver Horde doesn't quite one shot the hydras for me. Um, I, I didn't actually test that if. Because what I was finding when I was on Titan, day two, day three. When I was solo in, one with a hot shot was leaving the hydra literally one shot. But now I'm higher in power, so I suppose one with a hot shot would kill a hydra. That's important to know because there's hydras at the final boss fight. So if you can actually just with a hard and run, with a hard each of them, and then just sort of run around the map, because that's what it's all about is map rotation with this fight. So now we'll swap to our demolitionist rocket. Make sure it's critical that you do that to the setup. You need, I mean, yeah, you might not have as good demo rocket as me, or maybe a better demo rocket. Doesn't matter too much as long as you have got a demolitionist rocket, because it's the fusion grenade starfire protocol setup. We're using strike and light 
we charge uh, we elemental wells. So when we get when we pick up a well from elemental ordnance, we will get strike and light, which gets, gives you some resistance damage when you're running around. Which you're doing that in this mat in this arena. Yeah, you've got some increased resistance. So we'll start the fight. Two hydras starts uh, um, at each phase. So you get these for every t after every DPS phase you do. See the ad spawns. Um, what you've got to understand is there's left, middle, and right. There's always one side where there's no spawn of supplicants. So two, three supplicants spawn, two goblins. I think it's three supplicants and two goblins that spawn up. So this is what pe this is what I am assuming is killing people. The supplicants, but what the question is, it's not just the supplicants are killing you. Why are they killing you? Well, I'll tell you why they're killing you. They're killing you because you're looking up in the air trying to shoot the damn fuses. While you're looking up in the air, supplicants are coming up to you and exploding. You can't stand for too long to get the fuses. Right? You've got to make sure that you're sort of on the move. And also try to pick a side where supplicants aren't spawned on to start shooting the fuses from. And if you feel as though you're pressured when you're shooting the red fuses and you might die, disengage, disengage from that, right, and start again. There's no penalty for you not shooting the fuses in time, apart from it resetting. So you just start again. So this particular time, I've had the time to shoot all five fuses. I had to jump up in the air because I think there was a supplicant behind me, but I got it that time. So that's the, for me, for me actually, the entire thing, that's the most annoying part. I thought I had a healing grid on there for some reason. I threw a fusion, nearly killed myself. So this yellow current, so there's four yellow current routes in this room, right? In this boss uh, fight. Obviously we've opened, the red current opens up the second room, which is what you need in able to... Um, shoot the yellow fuses to complete them. They start in the red room and they end in the room that you've just opened. There's four different routes but only two are open at any time. You need to know the routes off by heart if you can, preferably. If you don't know these routes at all, you need to practice this fight and do not do solo flaws until then. Because you will definitely die because you will end up taking too long to, to, to sort of uh, decipher where the fuses are. And you're like looking at this pipe and that pipe. Is it this one? Is it that one? Before you know it, the Riven boss has killed you. Void resist is a big one as well. Don't let the boss kill you. So void resist protects against the Riven. Concussive dampener will protect protect against any supplicants that explode on you. And obviously my power level will stop me from being one shot. But if it's two supplicants that explode, I will die. If it's one that explodes directly on top of me, I will not die because of concussive dampener and because of strike and light and because of 100% resilience and stuff like that. So we're at DPS. So you've got to shoot the five red uh, currents again. And this is this is where we're going to do our damage. This monitor has pushed annoyingly. Notice we, we haven't got fun of mine. We've got nothing, none of that stuff. Right? We've just got the solo operative and the weak and clear. So you start with a well. Uh, and then you want to do Wither Horde and then Rocket Grenade Rocket. Uh, I could have utilized my combos a little better than what I did. Right, but for the most part, this is the sort of damage that you would do. Uh, if you do it effectively, you'll solo three phase. If you do everything properly, and my, if my power was a little higher and stuff. That first phase of damage there wasn't ideal. I would have liked to have got to the R at least. Just my um, combo of rocket slash grenades. I didn't throw as many grenades as I should have done. Is, is what it is what happened with that. So once a phase of damage is done, I also see people wiping here because there's still supplicants up in the alt on the other room. Now, when you're going between the rooms, the supplicants can sort of ambush you and explode on you before you can sort of jump over them. Sometimes, pay caution. To, when you're going between rooms now the doors closed in the middle 
you you can use that die in the middle. It's a really good actual um, path. The supplicants do not ambush you in the middle door, but they do on the left and right pathways. So when you do open the door, when you shot the fire fuses, if you see there's like three supplicants at the other end of that hallway, go through middle. Why not? As long as the Riven boss isn't that, that close to you and you can do that manoeuvre, then do it. Go through. Sometimes I'll go through mid and not risk it. Because sometimes you can sort of hit your head on the on the ceiling of this uh, hallway and the supplicants rush you and you have no chance of surviving that sometimes. I actually lost the solar floss because of that uh, on day one. Day one solar floss lost because of a supplicant. I was lower power then as well, and they were one-shotting me, definitely. So, yeah, don't be pressuring yourself to make sure that you're going through the, the, that hallway. Like, you don't have to commit to a route every time. You've got to do some decision-making. Like, right now, I know the Riven's here, so I use this pillar. I'm letting the Riven go past, so I'm manipulating this boss. You've got to know how to manipulate the boss. Because the zones where the boss actually doesn't push... Or won't push, he'll just stand. Now, I don't know if the boss AI changes on Master, where he's a bit more aggressive. I don't know that. But on this mode, you can sort of manipulate the boss and stop him from pushing you and stuff. I know the routes off by um, heart. Sometimes I forget, you know, this one or that one. But for the most part, I do. But sometimes if I... Um, if I feel as though I'm going to rush a fuse and the boss is right behind me, I won't rush it. Especially if you're 30, 40 minutes into a solo flawless. Which is, this is my first solo flawless on a warlock. Now, I haven't talked about Phoenix Dive at all. As I said, for this class at least, it gives you cure times too. But what does Phoenix, what does Phoenix Protocol do? Phoenix Protocol gives you class ability energy on grenade kills. That doesn't just apply to rifts. That applies to Phoenix Dive, which is why I never swapped. So that's insane, right? So you can Phoenix Dive if you're weak, Fusion Grader add, get your Phoenix Dive back. That's insane for this fight, and I haven't seen anyone use that. I haven't seen anyone mention it. I've saw people swap between a support exotic and then back to Phoenix Protocol for DPS. I didn't do that. I didn't feel like I needed to. I didn't run healing nades neither because... I didn't feel as though I needed that. Um, the Phoenix Dive was enough with the few and, and the Fusion Grade one shots the Minotaurs, which is nice. And it just means I don't have to go in my goddamn menu and swap. It really, I hear it in runs. I can't tell you how much I hate swapping between stuff. Like, oh, I forgot to swap my healing aid. I need to do DPS. It's, like, it's over. DPS starts and you're on healing grid and you forgot to swap the Fusion. You've wasted a phase. So I hate stuff like that. So I, I was I was thinking, how can I make this build work with protocol without swapping, but still having some regen? The Well of Life will give you the health regen when you kill an ad with your grenade. And you'll get your Phoenix Dive back. You'll keep getting it back. So you can sort of spam it and have a Phoenix Dive build like the old Phoenix Dive that I used to use all the time when it was an unlimited use. Technically now, Phoenix Dive is, is nerfed as opposed to what it was, where it would constantly give you... In my opinion, looking at how the Titan can survive, and even the Hunter, I think the Warlock should be allowed to spam Phoenix Dive, but at a lower cost for health regen. Back. So you still get some, but not as much as now. Maybe a 25% chunk, but you can spam it. Because it would just creep up the survivability game of the Warlock. Because it isn't as good as Titan. Even without Splendor, it's not as good for survivability. Also, make sure you farm up a well. This is common sense. Farm up a well before you start the next damage phase. Right. Always calculate. Now, I saw that I was starting to shoot the phases. I was getting flinched. And I was like, how many supplicants are up? There's l at least four or five. So I li immediately Phoenix dived and reset. You need to clear the room a bit when it's like that. Clear the room out just a little bit. You can't entirely have it clear because once all ads are dead, more spawns of supplicants happen. But if you can get it to the happy medium of just one phase, one wave of ads up while you're shooting the bells, the fuses, sorry, then 
that's better than having two waves of ants, essentially. And if you must pop a well because you've, you've got cornered by the boss and the supplicants and you're about to die, do pop the well. You can always farm, farm it back up. Well, the Radiance is on a low cooldown since they changed the super rates whenever that was, six months, a year ago, whenever that was. When they changed that, Well Radiance is on a super fast cooldown to the point where you don't need uh, Phoenix Book, uh, you don't need the Phoenix, um, the other chest plate, whatever it's called, the super regen plate. You don't need that, you just use Starfire. You, you literally don't need that. Also, utilize Weaver Horde a bit. Don't be frightened to just get Weaver Hordes down on supplicants and stuff or take them with uh, your SMG. I didn't shoot this fuse, so I went backtracked. But just always, the biggest thing is just be aware of all everything around you. Make sure that you're, you're aware of how quick the boss can get here. Like, the boss is quite slow, not too fast. I mean,. You can shoot the fuses in this room before this boss even got here. The, the issue is if there's a couple of supplicants up and stuff like that. But yeah, establish which route you need to take. So it's the left. It's, I need to go to the left hand side, I believe. This one's the most... The fuse I'm about to shoot now, well, the one after this is the most awkward. What I do... You, if you don't do it like... If you're too slow, then this is what you do. Um, you let the Riven come up and the Riven will loop around the middle platform you can then jump to the middle stairs and you have like 2-3 seconds to shoot that fuse right there and then jump back over, Phoenix dive back over or Icarus dash or whatever right? and that just saves it the only time when I don't do that is if I'm ahead of the boss if the boss is nowhere near me I'll quickly jump over before that boss gets into mid It's also to be noted, if you don't shoot the five fuses in time, the DPS will end. Also, make sure you've captured the boss in the other room. Don't make the mistake of the boss being in this room, because DPS won't start. So that is a very important thing. Well before damage starts to get maximum uh, DPS. Start with a hard rocket, grenade. Rocket first, then grenade. Don't make the mistake of grenade, rocket. It should be rocket, grenade rocket grenade um, try to use up most of your rockets it's not a big deal if you don't use them all because that means you've got an extra rocket for the uh, a phase coming up like I only used three rockets three, four rockets I think but look at the damage we did so I knew I wasn't gonna kill the boss on that phase so I've saved a couple just in case I don't get drops I would still, three rockets would still be enough for the final phase because that would be accompanied with the fusion grenade setup and with a hard and, and what have you. Like I said, when you've seen that, where you go through that hallway and there's a ton of supplicants, don't risk going, like trying to run over them doesn't always work. Sometimes you get stuck on, on, on that ceiling and sometimes the supercons rush you. There's abilities that make them disintegrate, like if you're on a Titan, Seismic Strike and stuff like that will make them disintegrate, so it's great. But Like they will with uh, if you use your Solar Melee ability, but you don't have that up a lot on this build. So, I just, I just take them... Sometimes I use... Um, Sometimes what I'll do is I'll Phoenix, I'll Phoenix dive and then Fusion Grenade. And as the f uh, as the Fusion Grenade kills the Supplicant, I've just used my dive, I get it back. That's sometimes what I do, it's a safe way of dealing with them. Because you're getting cure as you're killing them and then you're getting the ability back because of Phoenix Protocol. Because of its unique interaction with Phoenix Dive. I didn't know this. I had no idea. I had no idea that it had an interaction like this with Phoenix Dive, because I barely use Phoenix Dive if I'm being honest. The only reason why it's so good, the Phoenix Dive, is because Healing Rift isn't much used to you in this, because you've got to be mobile, you can't sip back too much. So while you're shooting fuses, if you're getting one shot by a boss, it's 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 very valuable to just then dive 
or healing aid. Obviously, I didn't do healing aids, which you could totally do that if you wanted. I just didn't want to uh, keep switching every phase. But if you wanted to swap between the nades, you can do that. You would have to switch up your setup a little bit different, maybe put elemental armaments on instead. Just to generate some wells to see if you've got something. We've lost our buff here, and there's too many. So I, I made a, a decision. There's too many uh, supplicants in there, so my buff was about to run out. So I'll, I'll go and get a fresh buff. Let the ad, ads de aggro a little bit. If you find that in a room where you're getting really aggroed, go to the opposite room. Um, start farming heavy or refarm up a buff, and then go back in, and you'll find. If you make decisions like that, it'll stop you from having that wipe. This is for players who haven't got their flawless yet. Some of you who's already flaw flawless this, they won't need to know these tips because they'll have already went through the pain of learning all this and playing a bit slower when they first started and then getting better and better and better at the fuses to the point where they're speeding it before the ri riding boss can even make it in there. I'm not to that stage yet, to be honest, because I haven't been just playing this dungeon non-stop. I've been leveling all my characters. It is a nightmare leveling three characters. I can understand why people don't do that nowadays. Because it is. To do three set of characters, pinnacle-wise, nightmare. It's a nightmare if you haven't got a lot of time in one of the weeks. Because it, especially if you want to do it properly, where you farm out your base power drops, you do all that stuff. You don't do the next pinnacle until you can absolutely pinch out the next level by farming primes, farming power, power drops and stuff like that. If you do it properly, it takes ages, it takes hours. I'm 8-9 gear now though, nearly 90 gear. So I, I'm getting 90 gear drops. I'm almost 90. I'm only missing the chest plate on the Warlock to get to um, max pinnacle score. So this is the final phase. You can see the boss's health is 10, maybe about 15%. So I've got more than enough damage. I've got max rockets as well. You'll notice rockets, ammo-wise, heavy, was dropping a lot in this. The w I had no issues with ammo. I haven't had issues with, with ammo in this... Uh, not on this fight, at least. Sometimes on the Harvey boss, heavy doesn't drop. But for the most part, on this fight, I, I find that heavy frequently drops. So, working as intended. Same thing again. We have a hard rocket, grenade, rocket, grenade. Um, I'm just going to spam rockets a bit. Be careful not to kill yourself. If the boss gets too close in your well, the boss can you can actually die from splash damage if you that point blank range. But that was the solo flawless on this dungeon on a warlock. I hope you enjoy. Thank you.